In my last video, I spoke about signing with a new theatrical agent and receiving a problematic contract, a general services agreement, AKA the GSA. Now, it was a simple contract, about two pages long, but there was a clause that made me question, how does that benefit me or any actor? And so I researched the clause a bit and found out that it's called a termed rollover. And I'm gonna share the pros and cons of that clause. Now, don't check out on me. I know that contract talk and legalese tends to make folks sleepy, myself included. So I'm gonna make this video very simple to follow because it's important that we learn to protect our future and our assets. And that usually starts with the contracts we sign. Disclaimer, I am not a lawyer and this video is not intended to provide legal advice. If you have concerns about a contract or its terms, I highly recommend consulting an entertainment or a contract attorney to ensure you fully understand your legal rights and obligations. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, let me first define what a termed rollover is. And keep in mind, this term is not how you'll see it in a general services agreement or a contract. Instead, the contract will say something like, this contract is for 12 months, and if the talent doesn't cancel within writing within 30 days of its expiration, it will renew automatically. Yeah, and that's basically the definition, a provision that allows the agreement to automatically renew for an additional term after the initial contract period ends, unless one of the parties cancels the contract within a defined time. So how is this problematic? Well, first, if we're being honest, Sometimes we can't even remember to cancel a 30 day Netflix trial. So let's not try and rely on our overstimulated memories to remember to terminate a GSA within 11 months, okay? So here's what I found in my research that makes the termed rollover problematic. Number one, unintended commitment. Letting a contract roll over or automatically renew can lock you into a commitment that you didn't plan on. Say you sign a contract with this clause and by month six or worse, month three, you no longer wanna be repped by this agent or manager, but you stay until the contract ends, but you forget to cancel it because you know, life has a funny way of lifing and getting hectic when important things are due. So now you can't leave without breaching the contract because you didn't remember to sign out and it renewed automatically and nobody wants to be in a relationship that they can't get out of. While there are some representatives who will let you out of a contract, there are others who will keep you bound for many reasons, like maybe you've been booking jobs in spite of your disdain of them, making them money so they're not gonna let you go, or maybe they're just plain spiteful, which happens because human beings. Number two, outdated terms. When your career evolves or the industry adds new technology, your contracts should mirror the changes. So for example, maybe when you first signed with the agent or manager, you were just starting out and the old terms were okay, but now your value has increased or you've added a hyphenate to your name that that old contract may have said something like, the rep gets 10% of all of your creative outlets. Now that was fine then because you were only acting, but now there's more at stake, especially if that representative isn't doing anything to help you increase the value of that new hyphenate, meaning they're just collecting a check. So termed rollover keeps you tied. And keep in mind, every union in this industry renegotiates their contract at least three to four years without renewals, right? So. If they don't occur for unions, they shouldn't occur for you as well. Number three, missed opportunity for negotiation. When a contract automatically renews, you miss out on a golden opportunity to renegotiate. I once heard Arsenio Hall say that Jay Leno told him that with success comes renegotiation. Just like the cast of Friends and their million dollar per episode deal, once they became successful and the terms of the original contract ended, Recognizing their worth, they band together and they negotiated to all be paid a million dollars per episode, which I'm pretty sure they're still reaping the benefits from today. Number four, budget and planning issues. Actors are like freelance gig workers. Some get 1099, some get W-2s, but financial planning and budgeting are important. And if you're suddenly locked into another year of obligations you didn't anticipate, it can really throw off your financial game. And it's important to keep more money in our pockets than in our reps' pockets. So for example, a manager's commissions are negotiable, 
maybe you started off paying them 15 to 25 percent of your commercial earnings but now that you're booking more television roles do you want to drop that commercial 15 to 25 percent commission down to five percent or zero and keep more money for your retirement or your current overhead or go on a vacation number five legal risks Depending on the state where you live, the regulations or how the contract is written, there could be legal gray areas with automatic renewals. And if something goes wrong and you're still stuck in a contract you didn't actively renew, the legal headache is something that could cost you thousands of dollars to get out of. And look, don't feel bad if you've already signed a contract with this term. Maybe you initially signed a GSA and you didn't read it thoroughly or you didn't know what it said. If this term is in your contract, you can be sure that you don't miss that term, the end of the date, and you can renew within 30 to 60 days. Number six, miss cancellation opportunities. Finally, you might miss out on exploring better opportunities. Whether it's with another agency or a manager, say your contract is ending soon and you start taking meetings with another office that can help you level up your career. They offer to represent you, but you accidentally let the old contract renew. Are they gonna wait for you for another 12 months? I don't know, but that's really frustrating and it would be a huge disappointment if that happened. The termed rollover is just one problematic area of the GSA. Trust me, there are many more and usually they are listed at the end of the contract where most people stop reading from legalese fatigue. So I'm gonna keep reminding you that when it comes to these contracts, read them, know what they say, know what you're agreeing to and consider hiring an entertainment lawyer an attorney to read the contract and tell you the red flags and the problems they can cause you down the line if you're ever in a position where you can't avoid the termed rollover and you want to work with that agent or manager why not try to negotiate the term try to get something that's more fair ask them to remove the rollover clause entirely Negotiating, they instead amend the contract with an end date. This way you're in control and nothing rolls over without your consent. If they push back and decline, you should question where else in your career they're going to be unyielding. You'll have a big decision to make. Will they be worth signing with? That's your decision. And if you can't get that rollover term out of the contract and you decide to sign with this agency or manager anyway, just be smart about it. Set a calendar alert for 30 to 60 days before the contract ends, and this will give you plenty of time to consider if you want to continue, if you want to renegotiate, or if you want to leave altogether. And be sure to follow the contract's stated way of canceling, like certified mail or whatever it states. But at the very least, be sure to send an email because emails are binding and don't ghost them. Handle your business like a boss, because you're a boss. I hope this information helps you to stay on top of things rather than being blindsided by an automatic renewal. Oh, and a little side note, make sure there's a feasible out clause in the contract. For instance, sag after contracts include a four month no bookings clause. So you don't book a job in four months, you can terminate the contract without any repercussions. So even if you sign a contract with a termed rollover, be sure that there's a proper out clause because it might be a lifesaver later on. So how are you feeling with all of this information? Are you feeling afraid to sign a contract? Because there's no need to feel fear. A good contract helps to protect both parties. It's healthy to know what your contracts say. It's just part of the business that we tend to ignore. But you'll feel better about making decisions based on what serves you today and in your future. So read your contracts. There you have it. The next time someone slides you a general services agreement, take a moment. You could take a few days and put it under a turning review. It's okay to be cautious about those rollover clauses and any other problematic clauses. You have the right to negotiate. You have the right to decline. You have the right to protect yourself. So if a manager or an agent gives you pressure about signing your contract right now, that's a huge indicator that you should probably walk out because that's operating in bad faith. Always know your worth as an actor and a human being.
I hope this was helpful information. If so, drop a comment in a line. If you have any contract experiences, share them. I'd love to read them. Also, be sure to check out Acting Lessons Learned, the podcast, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And I'll see you in the next video where I'm going to share how I overcame my insecurities of auditioning after not doing so for two years theatrically. Because sometimes feeling rusty can make me feel like I don't know what I'm doing anymore. But I tapped into some old techniques of script analysis and I'm gonna talk about that in the next video. Until next time, I'm Tawana Floyd and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.